start off. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We all have done half of part this event, Plan Protection Day 2021, which are including paper competition, photographic contests, quiz championship, and scientific infographic competition. Then today, we attend international webinar hiring theme today, Integrating Crop Protection to Achieve Zero Hunger SDGs 2030. As we all know, plant pests and diseases are one of the main factors that determine for agriculture productivity. High and good productivity is a step to achieve zero hunger as we want. So, are you ready to become a part of this noble purpose? I think definitely yes, because if not us, who will be? And also, I will remembering you about what our ulama said. Taking note is a binder of knowledge. By taking note, we can review what we wrote today. And by taking note, is a quail three time of reading. And by taking note, we can get new inspiration by reread our notes so we can applicate what we get today for our agriculture, for our community, for achieve our noble purpose, zero hunger in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, also today we will announce our champion competition in our YouTube channel at Klinik Tanaman Unpad. It will be held this afternoon at 4 p.m. Western Indonesian time. So guys, are you have to subscribe our YouTube channel? If you don't have, please subscribe our YouTube channel at Klinik Tanaman Unpad. Our content is about agriculture education, our company profile, and also our daily activity in Klinik Tanaman. Last but not least, hopefully from this event, Plant Protection Day 2021, we can get a lot of benefit, especially for our agriculture, then to achieve zero hunger for SDGs 2030. I'm Rizky Hartoyo, Chief of Student Association Clinic Tanaman, would like to welcome all the participants in this international webinar. Thank you so much for your participant and your support. Happy listening for this webinar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All right. Thank you to Mr. Rizky. The next agenda is a welcoming speech. And this time, the speech will be delivered from Clinic Tanaman Advisor, Dr. Agus Susanto, SPMSE. To Dr. Agus, Time is yours. Uh, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your coming and joining is uh, in PPD. Uh, I want to express my uh, appreciation to Clinton, Committee, uh, and and all of you, uh, all of students. Uh, mix this seminar unto. Thankful to uh, Mr. Yuba. Uh, Kang Nono, Kang Yoyo, ya, dari Kipka Gelar, and uh, Sato San from Yambakar University, and uh, Bu Fitri. Uh, selamat berseminar, good luck, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Agus. Ladies and gentlemen, next one, we will have greetings from the respect Representative Dean Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Pajajaran. Mr. Nono Charsono, SPMSC, PhD. Time is yours. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear my voice? Yes, yes. clearly. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, <clears throat> honorable speaker, also Dr. Yuba Dodge, Senior Agriculture FAO, FAO Regional Office, Bangkok, and also Dr. Saturo Sato, <clears throat> Associate Professor, Faculty of Agriculture, Yamagata University, Japan, and Pak Yoyo Yogasmara, 
<coughs> spokesman Kampung Adat Tradisional Village Cita Gelar Sukabumi Welcome Pak Then Advisory Board of Land Protection Clinton Student Association Dr. Agus Susanto uh, Our Passionate Moderator Dr. Fitri Widiantini Our Enthusiastic Students and also uh, scientists and also researcher and also lecturer from other university. Welcome to this uh, webinar, Plant Protection Day 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, on behalf of <coughs> the Dean Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Pada Pajajaran, Dr. Medi Rahmadi, I warm welcome you to this International Plant Protection Day 2020, which is held today, Saturday, 23 October. I'm Nono Charsono, <coughs> Vice Dean for Academic Research and Student Affairs of Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Pajajaran. This webinar, International uh, <coughs> Plant Protection Day, 2021 is key platform for our interaction, our togetherness, and our collaboration <clears throat> to share our knowledge, expertise, experience, and idea in this uh, very important agricultural issue, especially related to <clears throat> integrated crop protection to achieve zero hunger SDGs. 2030 and also to address global challenges and opportunities in agriculture. In this all, even also uh, provide our students as young generation in agricultural science to improve their knowledge and perspective and idea to reduce spreading harmful pests and disease for improving crop production to fulfill ever growing human needs. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it is forecast uh, that in 2050, we will need 70% more food. So the innovation in crop protection is, is very demanded. The technology is expected to substantially improve agricultural efficiency, Crop protection is complex since crop protection is complex of instrument, product, and strategy to defend crops against weeds, pests, viruses, plant disease, and other harmful factors. <clears throat> uh, this uh, can have the devastating result, considerable reducing or even destroying future crop. Scientists and farmers around the world are. Uh, constantly working on control measure to eliminate <coughs> unwanted impact and the expert have come to a common conclusion that protection is far more efficient than pure. Luckily, the latest development in modern agriculture provide uh, various solution. <coughs> However, there is no singular approach to crop protection, I think. Farmer today have diverse tool toolbox to minimize damage from fast, including chemical, biological, or natural composition, uh, well, while they still are individually powerful and combining them in agronomic approach <coughs> tailored to farmers' specific challenge and hence their effectiveness while minim minimizing the environmental impact of agriculture. So innovation and cooperation is needed in order to improve high quality agricultural products <clears throat> as modern agriculture continue to evolve scientists farmers and students develop the tools for managing weeds insect and this is including crop management software data science precision farming technology and <clears throat> all the way technology is driving crop protection in modern agriculture By using our knowledge in crop protection, <clears throat> pest disease have been managed economically and environmental friendly. Crop protection science has contributed 
significantly in sustaining crop production, the environment, health, and food security. <clears throat> Currently, the field uh, <clears throat> crop protection now integrate preventive, mechanical, chemical, cultural, and biological tactics in the management of fast disease and also with should be. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the important issue is how we, how we will be able to feed a growing human population on this earth. The world population is probably to rise to nearly 10 billion by 2050. We should make sure that we are able to do so and to meet this demand, we will need to increase crop production by 70 to meet this growing need. Our challenge, our uh, globe is being accosted by environmental degradation, especially in agriculture, natural resources, global climate change, and all of which will reduce the supply of fresh water, increase, increase soil degradation, reduce arable land, and increase also pest and disease attack. <clears throat> this presents a double challenge, the shift in global population and demand at the same time, this challenge of global climate change impacting condition for producing, producing food. <clears throat> the near future we will face a situation we have more demanding anything more food, but fewer people, less ideal condition to produce food crops. <clears throat> All the mean that there will be growing risk of a food shortage. However, we believe <clears throat> crop protection scientists, farmers, and students can tackle these challenges. Other challenges for crop protection sciences are to develop innovative ecological, sound, economical, and sustainable crop protection system, which can be integrated into existing and future cropping system to bring uh, more divers to fast and disease management. We do hope this challenge can be overcome by <coughs> working together. The key is to transform this integrated crop protection into one that is productive a more productive and innovative approach to achieve zero hunger SDGs 2030. <clears throat> the theme of this conference is very relevant. Nowadays, there is no much work need to be done in this area, and I wish all of you a fruitful webinar and enjoyable time during webinar plan progression day 2021. 20, uh, At the end, we wish thank you to Clinton Plant Protection Student Association the head is Mohamed Rizki Hartoyo, and also the Chief of Plant Protection Day 2020, Mr. Surya Bima Wichaksono and other students who, who devoted their time which make this webinar comes through. And to the steering committee from the Department of Pest and Disease who arranged this valuable meeting. Thank you very much. I give back to the uh, this opportunity to the moderator uh, to the <coughs> MC. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nono. Ladies and gentlemen, let us proceed to the next agenda item. We have already invited several speakers who are experts in their field. We will have an, a deep discussion about our topic which will allow us to expand our knowledge. Before the first speech and discussion begin, we would like to thank you to PT Cicil Solusi Mitra Technology, PT Telkomsel Indonesia, Bayu, PT Biz Digital Indonesia, as our sponsor and also all media partner for today's webinar. All right, Samia, without further ado, we will hand over the floor to our moderator, Dr. Fitri Widiantini, SPMBTS, who will lead the first until the last discussion session. She was born in Bandung, and now she is a lecturer at the Department of Pest and Disease, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Pajajaran. She has won several awards and grants, such as Endeavour Postgraduate Award from Australia Federal Government, Research Grant, Sweet Potato Resistance Selection Against Scab Disease, and many more. She has been part of several organizations, such as American Pitopathology Society, Indonesian Student Association of South Australia, and several other organizations. 
Furthermore, she held so many publications, such as Journal Antifungal Potency of Secondary Metabolism Produced by Endopitic Bacteria Against Pathogenic Fungi Pericularia Orizae, and she also has several publications. So, without lingering, to miss this fit three, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much for the committee for uh, giving me opportunity to become as uh, the moderator for today's seminar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, all the participants for the international webinar. Uh, academics, researchers, lecturers, uh, practitioners, students, delegates from various uh, universities in uh, Indonesia, as well as uh, overseas. Welcome to the International Webinar of Plant Protection Day 2020. Uh, today, we will uh, be talking about the implementation of integrated pest management uh, from various aspects. Um, before we start, I would like to greet our speakers today. Good morning to Dr. Yubak Dodge. Uh, I think he's already here, right? And good morning also to uh, Dr. Satarosato and uh, Mr. Yoyo Yogasmana. Thank you very much uh, for uh, spending your valuable time with us here. Just a couple things to remember during our uh, broadcast today that you can drop questions anytime during the seminar in the Q&A box. Uh, and then we will discuss uh, the answers uh, once the speakers completed their talk. And the questions can be submitted in Bahasa Indonesia. So don't worry, I understand Bahasa and uh, probably will translate them for you, for, uh, for the speakers. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our, spur, our first speaker for today, Dr. Yubak Doj. Uh, he is the Senior Agriculture Officer from uh, FRO Regional Office, uh, Asia Pacific in Bangkok, uh, Thailand. Dr. Yubak has an extensive uh, experience in, the, in research, teaching, extension, and policy at various capacities in Nepal. Uh, prior joining FAO, uh, Dr. Yubak was uh, appointed as secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development uh, of Nepal. Uh, in FAO, he has an uh, important role as the module lead in plant production and protection along with other uh, his responsibilities, including the Executive Secretary for Asia Pacific Plant Protection Commission. So um, Dr. Yubak today will share his experience about integrated pest management to achieve zero hunger uh, SDGs uh, in 2030. So Dr. Yubak, when uh, you're ready, uh, uh, the screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam, uh, all the distinguished participants, organizer, uh, distinguished uh, uh, professors, academicians, deans, vice deans of the various uh, institutes, and also uh, very uh, beloved students and all the participants. I am very much glad to participate in today's program. Yeah, very good morning. Namaste. Salam alaikum. I am speaking right now from Kathmandu. I was uh, in home leave. Anyway, when I received uh, this invitation, actually I was very much excited to participate uh, this program. And why not to uh, participate at this very important International Day of Plant Protection? Uh, the reason is, this is also because uh, our uh, work and the responsibilities and also I was also the university professor before uh, I worked in the government uh, system in Nepal and before I joined FAO, I was also assistant professor for entomology in uh, agriculture university in Nepal. And this topic, when I uh, saw, 
I was very much interested. Anyway, without further ado, once again, I would like to uh, express my sincere thanks to all of you. And I will proceed uh, with my presentation from here. Yeah, uh, in this morning, uh, I would like to uh, go my presentation in three different sections. In the first section, I will be talking about little bit uh, about the Indonesia, how Indonesia progressed in raising agriculture production, productivity, the production value, of course, the money, and uh, actually what is the IPM and how IPM contributed uh, in uh, achieving this production and the productivity and how the agrochemical uh, were reduced with the use of this IPM approach and what are the major challenges ahead with us in the Asia Pacific region. So uh, tentatively, I'll be uh, talking in these three areas so can you hear uh, can you hear i am audible to all of you yes it's loud and clear mr Yuba. okay yeah okay thank you very much yeah i'll proceed uh, with this uh sorry just to let me yeah arrange this one yeah probably uh, I, I will not be the right person to talk more about indonesia and the indonesia how uh, it progresses uh, in raising the agriculture productivity. But anyway, I tried to go uh, all the literatures available there and I could see the productivity growth, especially in two major crops, the maize and the rice. The fast yield growth uh, ratio, if we go uh, through this graph, uh, I think we can see here the year 1985 to until pre to pre-2000, that is around 1980, uh, 1998. So during that time, the national IPM program was uh, yeah, heavily launched throughout the countries and thanks to the government and all the, uh, the uh, partners, working partners, actually the productivity, if we see here, pre-2000 year, it was in case of maize, nearly 187% was increased. Then if we see the same uh, figure of the maze, the graph of the maze, the post 2000, we could increase only 97%. And the similar is the situation in paddy rice. Before 2000, it was the, yeah, more than 85%. Then post 2000, only 16%. So what was the fantastic, what were the clues? Actually the clues we all know and our students and uh, our distinguished faculty members, we all are well aware that how IPM contributes in uh, increasing crop yields, in reducing chemical pesticides, in improving environmental uh, areas and health, many direct and indirect effects are there. This was not only the reduction of the chemical pesticide, of course, the introduction of high yielding varieties, the green revolution, the effects, they were there. And just I'll, how my photographs are too, I really did not understand. Yeah, if we see the gross value, gross, gross production value, the rapid growth, we can see in per hectare basis, again in the same era, 1985 to 1998. And then pesticide expenditure, just I would like to emphasize here, the pesticide expenditure is, uh, was skyrocketing here after 2000, when the IPM, national IPM program was phased out. And this program was uh, actually a little bit not that effective. Of course, even after phasing out, probably the program would have been yeah, would have been con uh, country, uh, continuously employed by the institution. But the but many institutions actually the program was not that extensive, and because of that reason, until uh, yeah pre twenty twenty around twenty eighteen, the figure I found, the pesticide use 
has been very very uh, high and it is increasing exponentially because of the low program or no program on IPM. Yeah, the overall trend, if we see here, the thriving agriculture food sector, it was driven by pro poor economic growth, green revolution and effective agri agro uh, chemical reduction. So uh, when when we talk about the agrochemical uh, in the agriculture production, it does not only in, uh, increases the agriculture production, but negative effects are there. I'll be coming uh, with my later slides to, to that area. And the progressive increase in dietary energy supply, we can see here the marginal 6 to 10% undernourishment since 2010 in case of the country situation. And the substantial increase in value in the productivity was prior to 20, 2000. I already explained that this was because of the national IPM program, along with other programs, maybe high yielding varieties, base management practices, the value chain program, agriculture performance. Actually, uh, what I would like to draw my, uh, focus at this point is agriculture performance is not only linked with the pesticide use. So if pesticide would have been increasing alone, the production in other countries will also be more and more. So since 2000, the exponential increase in pesticide use is because of the declining farmer. Uh, yeah, it has caused declining farmer income environmental biodiversity impacts and food safety hazards as our uh, vice dean already explained in his uh, opening remarks that there are a lot of hazards not only the hazards in the pesticide residue in the air in the water in the soil maybe in any unwanted area the pesticide goes by drifting effect or many ways and the 54 percent of indonesian farming population annually subject to poisoning actually i found one literature uh, produced by bodecker et al in 2020 so this is a this is not a uh, small figure i think it's a quite a large figure so we have to be very very careful and then what is yeah what was the approach that helped in indonesia agriculture was the ipm and if we go through the literal meaning of ipm ipm is not a single control method ipm is of course an approach in this ecosystem based approach there are many components there are principles there are many tactics and all they can be uh, combined as an integrated approach and if we talk about the integrated approach there are cultural practice mechanical practice physical practice biological as well as we can think chemical as a last resort as a last option when other control practices fail or maybe not equally effective so in this regard ipm is Actually, if we talk uh, in Indonesia or maybe Asia Pacific uh, uh, scenario, the FAO uh, developed IPM FFS package and the programs and uh, launched in different countries and a similar impact like Indonesia we can find. And it's a planned program, which I already explained that. What is IPM? If we go the literal meaning, it's a planned program which prevents pests, disease factors from causing unacceptable damage to the level of the injurious level. And it is also equally environmental sensitive approach that manages pest with all the sweet, utilizing with all the suitable options. And it's an integrated approach or process you can use to solve the pest problems while minimizing the risk of people environment and IPM can be used to manage all kinds of pests but of course uh, it is not a very direct not a very quick not like a magic fix it takes uh, time it is it takes 
uh, it works slow and because of this reason farmer normally they don't wait for the impact of uh, for the result of IPM and sometimes they go and choose very highly hazardous chemical pesticides if the chemical pesticides are more quick and effective they think they are a good medicine not as a pesticide so pesticide use is not needed when effective non-chemical control methods are available as already i as already i mentioned that if cultural mechanical biological and other natural options are there as long as they work in the farming then we should not bother about the chemical pesticides then how does ipm work still i'm elaborating a little bit about ipm probably it might not be necessary to our uh, students uh, because our uh, distinguished uh, faculty members uh, already might have covered these areas as i already highlighted ipm focuses long-term prevention of pest rather than short term and it is more ecosystem approach and with the application of ipm you can take action paste from becoming a problem so actually if we see all the insects available in the environment we should not bother to uh, with all of them only few percentage of the invertebrates insects they are paste rest might be useful or some are neutral so uh, ipm considers many many uh, informations based on the identifications based on the paste or natural enemies it determines and then what are the benefits of the ipm actually it detects it identifies it manages and uh, it manages the potential problems and similarly it helps to preserve the biodiversity and saves money increase farmer revenue and promotes clean well-maintained facilities and landscape minimizes health and environmental risks provides long-term solutions as our vice dean already emphasized in the morning speech that we have to meet uh, our food demand yeah already in 2015 uh, there will be a very very high demand of food uh, more than uh, double triple we have to increase so how can we increase uh, that live that amount of food demand is of course that we are in a very squeezed situation we have to rationally utilize our natural resources we have to optimize the production system so while optimizing the production system we cannot compromise our unwanted uh, or undesirable activities the uh, damaging environmental damaging activities so in this regard so if we go the ipm this is the ipm pyramid always the larger portion should be the preventive tactics and the small section might be the curative measures so how can we achieve this kind of pyramid is we could achieve by the avoidance mechanism by sampling by launching the sampling of the paste through the sampling and the monitoring and only as i already spoke that chemical pesticide is not uh, a enemy of the uh, ipm approach it is also a component within the IPM approach, but it is a last resort. It should, it should get less area in the pyramid. So before uh, going uh, and taking the decision of the chemical pesticides, we have a lot of options here. So we can create the awareness among the farmers. We can apply the cultural methods and the pest biology and the ecology is very very important unless knowing the pest biology we cannot em employ any control methods so how the adult behaves what is the damaging stages where do they go and things like those and the biological of course this is a very very important component in ipm yeah i already mentioned that in this universe 
we have many useful organisms than the harmful. So the biocontrol agents, the natural enemies, are the enemies of our enemies. So they, these enemies, this, uh, these are the useful uh, uh, organisms. They are the enemy of our enemy. So we have to apply them very carefully. And with the application of chemical pesticides, we do not let them to kill and die. And a sampling, of course, in case of some of the invasive paste, uh, the sampling method is very, very uh, inevitable, very, very important without knowing their paste occurrence, the abundance and uh, their proliferation in areas which do not apply the control measures. So these are some of the principal things. Then looking back uh, to plan ahead, in case of Indonesian National IPM program, maybe our distinguished uh, professor and uh, scientists are uh, also participating in this program. You have more information than me, which I am very much sure. But based on the literature uh, uh, available and in my past uh, literature shelf, actually I saw out of 67 different uh, harmful chemical pesticides. The government in 1986, the presidential decree, the, they were able to ban 57 rice pesticide. Thanks to the government, actually that was very, very, uh, yeah, very, very straightforward and a positive move on this direction. And they also created nearly 1,500 new posts new paste observer positions, then launch IPM program, and also in build national IPM policy. And with that policy, so pesticide subsidy was cut to 75% in first year and phased out completely by 1989. So this was the elimination of all coercive policies, pesticide use required to receive farm credit. Before, actually, if a farmer has to buy the chemical pesticide, uh, yeah, if a farmer has to get some credit for the farming, they had to buy some chemical pesticides. It was not only the case of Indonesia, but here in Nepal and other Asia Pacific country, actually, uh, these programs were something like embedded along with that. So a kind of promotional, uh, promotional kind of uh, things for the pesticides. So higher the pesticide uh, use, greater the yield would increase. That sort of feeling was there at that time. So if we go back about the revolution, a uh, green revolution, actually not only all the benefits we could see in terms of paste and pesticide, uh, higher use of pesticide and environmental destruction. Yeah, there are many hiccups of uh, this green revolution also, but of course it was uh, contributing significantly for yeah, millions of Hungry Valley. And the CRASH program, actually Indonesia government, they launched the CRASH program to train extension on IPM. And they enable in total uh, about 32 million World Bank loan to Indonesia, this was a great. And actually, uh, I already spoke about the principle of IPM. Yeah, how this IPM, what is the magic in IPM? So how does it work? Actually, it works through the farmer's field school. Yeah, we all know that a school without roof, without a building, without in a control uh, situation, without in a formal uh, set, it's a farmer field school is uh, the e school where the knowledge sharing uh, is normally conducted with the farmers in the open field where the crops are grown, where the pests are there, where the crops are there, where the natural enemies along with the other surrounding environments are there. And the farmer field school is very, very, uh, uh, yeah, one of the desirable approaches and now I could see uh, this kind of approach is not only being applied 
in terms of patient and disease management. It has also been equally applied by uh, the veterinarian colleagues, by other agriculture scientists in uh, carrying their messages with the farmers. So it is not limited only among the plant protectionists. So uh, it gives more emphasis about the healthy crop production. Similarly, it talked, uh, it makes compulsion about uh, the regular monitoring and uh, sampling, and it, it gives high emphasis on the natural enemies. So natural uh, uh, pest control, it is the central theme of IPM FFS. And the farmers are always considered as an expert. They are not the, uh, uh, actually uh, the feeling before uh, yeah before that uh, green revolution era farmer are normally laymen they don't know many things they don't understand agriculture they don't know paste and pesticide so that sort of feeling among the among we technician uh, actually that was the wrong feeling so uh, IPM FFS does not work on that basis. It works. Farmers are the risk bearers, not the risk avers. Actually, they, they have a lot of knowledge. They are the masters in the uh, in managing the pest and pesticide and disease. So they are the core things. So core FFS ingredients are basically participatory approach. So whatever technologies are generated in the field, maybe IPM packages and vegetable fruits, crops, number of crops. So that all, they all go through the particip participatory approach. The scientists, the technicians, the farmers, they work together, that is the participatory. And they also do small research activities. Of course, the sort of research activities are different than the research activities carried out in basic research, in research farms, but some some kind of knowledge generation, some kind of applied research, they also conduct how this pesticide works, how natural enemies works, how the varieties, how the uh, yeah, farmer believes, the community believes, these things work. And another area is the empowerment. Farmer empower, empowerment uh, is learning by doing. So they ask to do themselves in the field, involve themselves in the field. So just in this regard, I would like to cite and quote one uh, famous saying by the Rolling and Banden split in 1994. Yeah, they have also emphasized that farmers in the village, farmers are the officials, uh, actually they are the scientists, they are not the highly bureaucratic people. We just like uh, we sit in the office and we talk more bureaucratic way and the procedure, but actually they are the masterminds and they are the key to develop these all kinds of new innovations. So uh, again, I would like to emphasize that how Indonesia progressed in achieving the agricultural production, productivity, the cross value was not only due to the IPM, in the field. It was also uh, the reform in the policies. Actually, uh, the enabling environment in the policies is very crucial. Though, so the politics, the policies, the uh, conducive environment, they help a lot in every country. Unless the, this, the conducive environments are not there, in terms of developing of some of the pesticide guidelines, the pesticide policies, the acts, the IPM policies, the IPM programs. Actually, uh, uh, the technical people, uh, we have uh, very uh, less saying on that. Uh, while talking in my past, uh, working in my past experience also here in Nepal, actually I found policy governs many things. And unless we can, uh, we cannot convince. Unless we can convince our politician, and put the things into policy. Actually, some of the banned pesticides, some of the yeah old type of acts rules, we might be con continuing. So they uh, they are not going to help in the 
yeah, new innovations and other things. So Indonesia was one of the uh, model countries uh, in improving policy as well. Along with Indonesia, there are other countries in Asia Pacific region. They did lot through the improvement uh, in the policies and the reform, the use, ban, impose, uh, imposing things like of chemical pesticides. So overall outcomes of the national IPM program, if we go in Indonesia situation, it was approximately 1.5 million Indonesian farmers. They received IPM training. This is not a small number. Actually, it's a, it's a big number. It's a great uh, achievement. And uh, insecticide reduction also, it was quite uh, substantive. 50 to 80 percent in rice seed were sustained actually because of the reduction of chemical pesticides and across Java only 75 percent uh, reduction in chemical which is also a big number and the rice brown plant hopper across Asia Pacific and mainly in Indonesia also that was a no longer a problem because of the IPM program. And I also encountered here in Nepal at that time, I was director general in the department, the rice brown plant hopper, they were creating a havoc in Nepal also. And there was you and cry among the farmers and the first solution always the farmers, their tendency is to seek the sprayer and the chemical pesticide. Again, they were, contributing to increase the number of BPS, uh, yeah, the nymph and the adult, the, because they killed the natural enemies already available in the field. And later, uh, the national IPM program, along with the university, uh, uh, yeah, pilot extension program, we helped a lot and we reduced. And the farmer's income was also raised substantially, more than uh, 100 million, US dollar was saved per year by the Indonesian government and the pesticide imports was also reduced by 66%, which is very significant number. If we see here the biological control within the framework of this IPM, biological control is one of the important cornerstone of IPM. Here in this graph on the, le uh, uh, on the left side and on the right side, just I am trying to depict some information here. The drivers, the drivers. Sorry, what about time? Still, I can go. Uh, you have two minutes, sir. OK, OK, OK. Yeah, the drivers, uh, uh, number of parasite predators, herbivores, and these natural enemies. I already mentioned that in the rice field, actually 64% invertebrates are natural enemies. They are our friends. And the 70, yeah, 17 percent invertebrates are herbivores. Uh, might be harmful, not might be harmful. They are uh, neutral. And only 1% invertebrates out of this number are paced. So why we should bother? We should not be panicked in early 30 days to 40 days of rice planting. Actually, we should not uh, apply the chemical pesticides. And if we don't spray any chemical pesticides until 30 to 40 days, then the natural enemies, they do their business and we do not have to bother. And the pesticide use might not be necessary. We are uh, so in just what I'd like to emphasize here is we are going to kill our natural enemies. Uh, until that time. This was also proved by the experiments. And there are a lot of options of uh, blustering the building biological control. Yeah, you could see here, this is the uh, ecological engineering. We can plant some deploying, yeah, strip uh, alternate and uh, attractant crops, floor nectars, diversified our rice field, rice fields, vegetables, based on the, yeah, the insect, uh, actually they, uh, color and the order, they have the very good impact. So this these kinds of things are applying in the organic farming to boost uh, the natural enemies communities. So my message is to refrain using chemical pesticides in the early 30 days to 40 days in the rice. So 
planting of disease resistant crops as well and if we see the biological control here uh, actually there are three forms of biological control probably you might uh, these things might have already covered in your lectures the conservation biological control in this uh, thing we we talk resident natural enemy versus resident pest so the conservation means simply we have to uh, allow to act the role of natural enemies against the pest we do not have to disturb them with the chemicals and the augmentative mass rearing in the laboratory somewhere in the research lab or in the ppd lab then one can apply in the field then classical exotic natural enemies introduction from other areas uh, yeah against the invasive suppose in case of indonesia the uh yeah the the uh actually millivog cassava millivog the example of introduction of natural enemies against the cassava millivog was the classical type of Indonesia. over the past century indonesian scientists they deployed the exotic organism against invasive pest in 11 different crops the, the the literature suggests this number might be different i might be wrong in this case so please let me correct and the classical biological country uh, control it contributed monetary benefits one of my colleagues chris he based on his study nearly 10.2 billion per year in indonesia which is equal to about 0.4 percent of indonesian gdp so this is a great contribution because of the biological one. And similarly, the productivity was increased in rice and uh, it stabled uh, the crop production as well. And one of the important example about the cassava millivolt in biological control, and in 20, sorry, 2009, this cassava millivolt, uh, it's a hymenopteran wasp. It was native to South America and it invaded south asia and gradually from thailand in 2010 then gradually from laos cambodia in 2011 vietnam 2013 and in the year 2014 <clears throat> the parasitoid anagras hymenopteran uh, parasite was introduced in indonesia and firstly uh, near to java bogor area uh, and this uh, approach actually this was under the leadership of uh, thailand's royal government as well as support of the indonesia government and this parasitoid they established in the field once they were released against the cassava millivog uh, where the threat was very severe and the cassava one of the food secure secure food uh, secure crops in entity timur maluku that area they established well and the parasitoid reduced uh the pest attack across southeast asia and they provided long-term pesticide free solution against the millibug and yeah i am coming to main topic how ipm will contribute in achieving the sdg goal sustainable development goal yeah if we go the sustainable goal number one it's uh, no poverty we are contributing to reduce the poverty and zero hunger sustainable development goal is zero hunger so how can we achieve this poverty reduction and uh, achieving the zero hunger of course we have only the solutions to increase the production and the productivity monetary value of the crops uh, by implying different approaches and one of the approaches is this uh, yeah, ipm and ipm also equally contribute other sdg 13 which is against the climate action because climate change has high impact on increasing the insect paste and insect paste diseases cause more demand of chemical pesticides and whatever fraction of chemical pesticide are used they go directly or indirectly in the environment so in the same way sdg 13 sdg 14 15 uh, similarly sdg 7 sdg 8 so these are direct contribution from our agriculture activities and IPM activities. So how biological control contributed is, I already explained about the drop in cassava yield due to millibug. Actually biological control restored 72, uh, almost 73%. Then averted chemical pesticide used in Indonesia, 1.2 million hectare of cassava area. 
they, they helped to sustain food security in Timor and they generated a huge amount of US dollar. And beside this cassava millibug, there are a number of other invasive pests, migratory pests. They, they have been threatening uh, equally to every country, not only Indonesia and the other Asia region. Based on my experiences here, uh, here in FAO regional office, Bangkok, number of countries who have been receiving threats, uh, uh, the fall hormium, desert locust, and potato tuber moth, the disease, the rice blast, and other pests as well. So if we talk about the food security, of course, this uh, cassava millibug, this is one of the emerging threats in Southeast Asia. I already spoke. And what will be our step against it? We have to work against it. Then urgent need is the biosecurity measures we have to apply. And biosecurity, probably you might know, uh, we have to apply the plant quarantine measures. We have to apply other measures, awareness raising, which we are doing today. And thanks to the Indonesia government and the universities and you uh, young colleagues, uh, student colleagues uh, for uh, celebrating this kind of wonderful plant protection day throughout the country. This gives a very positive message and we can apply the biological control. Then another emerging paste, I already spoke about the fall hormium. Actually, this was a paste. This is a Lepidopteran paste. This is a Spodoptera frugipeda. It's a noctuid paste. They are a night flying as well as bird. They fly nearly 100 kilometers a night. They are the fast flying in 2016. They were the paste for the first time in Africa. Then, uh, in America region, then they started in Asia since 2018 for the first time in India, in Karnataka area, then it was very easy to reach to Nepal, neighboring countries, Bangladesh and other countries. What not about the reach uh, by now in, Asia, uh, in Australia uh, and just last week, they also uh, were reported in Solomon Island and Fiji and Vanuatu. They are also a biggest threat and we have been developing some uh, control actions against them. In Asia Pacific region, this fall hormium, actually this is an important pest for the maize, for the cereal crops, and they are polyphagous. They, they like equally to all crops. They are highly voracious, highly migratory in nature and very difficult. If we see the biology, the adult has nothing to do except laying the eggs. And after laying the eggs, the larvae, the heads and the larvae first to six star, they are the damaging. After third to uh, until fifth star, they are highly voracious. And this paste is very, very uh, a clever paste like an engineer, sometimes they don't hibernate if the con environment is very conducive. So some, yeah, mostly they go in the soil. Yeah, if you see the biology of the noctuid paste, of course, after the larvae, the pupae, they take the pupation in the soil. But this fall hormium, sometimes it does not go in the soil. Sometimes they hibernate. They don't have overwintering uh, stages also. They, they pass the life cycle Excuse very quickly. Me, Dr. Yubak, your time I am is finished, uh, running yeah. out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is a native to America, but now native to Asia. And if we talk about Indonesia situation since 2019, it invaded in Indonesia. And we have some TCP program. We are working uh, through FAO Indonesia and the government and Professor uh, Anthony, uh, uh, and my colleagues, they are working. So if you see the distribution of invasive pests, this fall hormium, it, have, it has crossed all the areas. And these are the invertebrate pests, uh, invertebrate predators. They are useful. We have uh, the ants against uh, this, this uh, the wasp and the ants against this uh, 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 cassava millibug as well. We have uh, Buveria bassiana, Metrigium anisoplay, microorganism. We have predators and this trichogramma, egg parasitoids, kelenomos, and the compilatis chloridis, these larval parasitoids and pupal parasites are there. So this is my last slide. So future steps against the invasive pest should be to mobilize the science-based technology 
and uh, educate uh, farmers along with our young scientists. So this is all about my presentation. I stop here. Uh, over back to you, uh, uh, colleagues. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yubak. Uh, it's very interesting talk. Uh, we have uh, several questions in the chat box, uh, but probably before that, um, I would like to update you that our uh, IPM implementation in Indonesia is regulated under the Indonesian government law that uh, all the crop uh, cultivation uh, are needed to implement uh, the IPM. So it's uh, compulsory for all the farmers and every level of the uh, cultivation. We, uh, so we're coming to the discussion. Uh, we will start with the question from uh, Boni Sisanto. Uh, he asked uh, about the use of seed that generated from the nuclear technology, whether it could be the answer for the food problem, and also the use for the eco-enzyme technique uh, to replace pesticide whether it can uh, improve the agricultural uh, quality. Do you want to? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, yes. Actually, the seed nuclear technology, of course, this technology may also contribute uh, in uh, managing paste insect because they already uh, hide somewhere in the seeds as well. And seed are the primary source. So we can mm -hmm. uh, apply these things. Uh, but I'm not sure about the nuclear technology that may be equally uh, yeah, applicable or maybe yeah. acceptable to every government in, mm -hmm. in the countries. So these things we have to work country by country and yeah. we have to cross check with the government policies and mm -hmm. the nuclear technology if they can be applied. Of course, they are uh, very sophisticated technologies mm -hmm. but that helps a lot. Okay, yes. over to you. Okay. Yes, actually, in Indonesia, uh, an institution of the nuclear technology uh, has been uh, making some uh, seed that provided uh, by mutation from the radiation of the gamma uh, uh, lights. So, yeah, but probably still in the uh, area of uh, research. Okay, so coming to the next question. Uh, how to convince the farmers to change from hard use of pesticide to IPM? So as uh, you mentioned before that the use of the pesticide is skyrocketing from 2000 <laughs> onwards. So uh, yeah, it's probably the, the problem uh, is how to convince uh, the farmer, as you said that a uh, farmer tends to, you know, to get the result very quickly because IPM is quite slow. Thank you. Yeah, the it's very clear that yeah. uh, our uh, joint effort and action mm -hmm. to convince the farmer, if we convince the people, uh, then of course it works. Yeah. So the farmers feel is cool, different approaches. Mm -hmm. And you young scientists, yes. students, actually you are the future for the uh, nation. So maybe we can bring that messages and uh, this works. Uh, we have to prove uh, uh, actually the benefits and the disadvantages so by that we can change the farmers perception okay so for uh, the young enthusiast agriculturists for uh, to become the ambassador is that right <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 madam yes. yeah okay okay so there's another question regarding uh uh how a uh, whether you know from the experience uh, about the using of the uh, bacillus thuringiensis seed, uh, do you think it's uh, able to reduce uh, or to delay the use of pesticide? Yeah, of course, uh, mm -hmm. Bt Bt based technology are there in many crops. Bt corn, mm -hmm. uh, Bt uh, cotton, Bt crops are there, mm -hmm. and this. While talking about the Bacillus thuringiensis application uh, in the crop protection, uh, my uh, my suggestion I am not sure about the laws, rules, mm -hmm. regulation in the Indonesia, yeah. but it is also country specific. If we talk in most of the countries uh, in South Asia, yes. actually they are against BT. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the laws, the policy, it has to be accepted. So education is the production of desirable change in yes. the human behavior. It has to mm -hmm. be accepted by the policies. 
uh, and uh, culture, the rules, regulation of the country. So if it is acceptable, that can be applied. Yeah, BT cons uh, against several noctuid paste are there. This is also a solution. Okay. Yeah, probably the regulation for the GMO uh, yeah. uh, plants in Indonesia. We we not supposed to plant or cultivate uh, in wide area, but probably uh -huh. in limited area. A restricted only. area. Oh, yes. thank you. Yeah. Thank. <laughs> <laughs> for this now, that's, for, uh, that's uh, what I Yeah, know this so is far. also good information for me. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, but we can uh, actually um, accept for the import of the GMO product, uh -huh. but not uh, not to grow. So far as I know. Yeah, just I would like to share one point here. When uh -huh. we were talking about the introduction of these kinds of novel engineering yeah. techniques here in uh, policy in Nepal, uh -huh. I was secretary at that time, and the minister uh -huh. did not accept it. And uh -huh. I answered him, "You are taking BT maize produced in Brazil and other countries." Yeah. Uh, from the supermarket but you mm -hmm. are not allowing to nepalese farmer to grow these things so yeah. what is the fate of uh, <laughs> something <laughs> something a kind of debate was there yeah yeah probably that's uh, the high level <laughs> yeah of the uh, the policy holder so yeah, yeah it's <laughs> it has to be decided by the policy people <laughs> yes that's correct <laughs> okay we still have uh, several uh, questions regarding the ipm uh, how long do you think it will take for the transition from the conventional agriculture to IPM to be effective, effectively implemented uh, based on your experience probably in Nepal? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, it does not take a long time. Uh -huh. Once you convince the farmer, uh, the important thing is the education, farmer education. Uh, then it is not like an organic system. It yeah. takes 16 to 18 years or something like that to make mm -hmm. the, the plot a more organic or perfect yeah. organic. It is not something like that. It is mm -hmm. in between organic and the conventional techniques. Yeah. So uh, just you start uh, working with them and yeah. then it goes uh, within a few months time, something like that. Yes. Uh, implementation implementation of IPM we can uh, work alone so it should involve all of the level from the farmer and then probably from the uh, companies pesticide companies and from the government as well right yeah. so that's coming to the next questions uh, from Refila, Refinaldo saying that Unfortunately, government policies not able to seize the pesticide producer in Indonesia. Since 1969, IPM program starting in Indonesia, pesticide trading always increased until now. So he asked, uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, of course, we have to uh, <laughs> work proactively on IPM yes. and non-chemical solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, our uh, distinguished uh, faculty members actually they have been trying a lot in the universities yep. when i was also in the university we try more in the university mm -hmm. but the same thing not happen when we go in the field why yeah. the reason is the department of agriculture the private sector actually they have also to focus more on ipm programs mm -hmm. so again we have to resurrect or revitalize Mm -hmm. IPM program in many aspects. So mm -hmm. maybe we have to continuously advocate these kinds of things to the policy level people. We we should make uh, able yeah. to them hear these things, not only in the university curriculum, but they yeah. should uh, be well reflected in the department PPD program. So mm -hmm. how best we can do these things. So in that regard, FAO is always supportive and the FAO will do our uh, support in terms of uh, capacity building, these mm -hmm. kinds of uh, yeah, knowledge uh, dissemination. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, uh, probably in Indonesia, the awareness of the society regarding the food safety has also take part uh, for the use of the pesticide. Because nowadays, the uh, Indonesia society realized that uh, you know, uh, better to consume uh, much healthier uh, plants that contain less uh, pesticide re residues, something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, probably one more question regarding the IPM uh, from Jajang Supriyatna. What is the IPM innovation practice? Ex 
actually especially uh, from farmer to mitigate the climate change uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah climate change uh, uh, has been uh, directly and indirectly impacting mm -hmm. our crops our mm -hmm. life our production things like those and this kinds of invasive pests actually we did not realize in the past where did yep. uh, yeah from where they came and uh, these all are being uh, yeah uh, count more become active and active because of the yeah. climate the temperature the our mm -hmm. farming practice mm -hmm. the pesticide use these things are there so we don't have uh, any more uh, mitigation mm -hmm. beside adaptation mm -hmm. we have to adapt along with the climate change yeah. we have to uh, work like uh, with the corona mm -hmm. uh, yes. yeah actually corona is there everywhere but we have yeah. to work along with the corona so mm -hmm. climate change is there uh, everywhere and it is impacting one or other way we have to mm -hmm. work along with this so yeah. how can we do these things is normally we have to uh, go think from the seeds planting practices mm -hmm. and the natural practices these things are there uh, i think our senior professors uh, you might have given a lot of information so we have to apply these things into practice yeah okay Okay, thank you very much for your time, Dr. Yubak. Uh, I think uh, we already answered all the questions that presented in the chat box. So probably uh, the next is uh, we would like to present um, a certificate of appreciation uh -huh. uh, for you as uh, for our... That graduate. will be great. That will <laughs> that be great. So once again, <laughs> thank you very much for organizer, uh, Madam, all the distinguished... Yeah. Uh, participants it was very uh, good morning for me mm -hmm. to uh, participate and learn more things from the colleagues i yes. only did not deliver the thing but i learned many things and mm -hmm. how long this program will go i think until around 12 something 12 30 Okay. we will I'll... have yeah we will have two more speakers after this okay yeah mm -hmm. i have immediately one activity then i'll okay. join again so thank you very much okay thank you very much uh please the committee can you please share the uh certificate of appreciation for dr yubak so this is uh, the certificate uh, great. yeah uh, thank, thank you, you for your participation you and probably hopefully we can uh, meet again and work uh <laughs> doing collaboration sure, sure. yes Sure, sure. We have to okay. meet up again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. So, coming to the next uh, speaker, we have uh, Professor Satoru Sato. Uh, he's the associate professor from uh, Faculty of Agriculture, Yamagata University. Sato Sensei, are you here already? Hello, Sato Sensei, can you hear my voice? Okay, I, I can hear you now. Thank oh, you. Okay. okay, let me introduce you, uh, uh, Professor Sato. Uh, Professor Sato is Associate Professor from uh, Yamagata University. He's conducted many uh, research uh, regarding a uh, uh, variety of organism, especially in the agriculture landscape to determine their function in the agriculture mm -hmm. ecosystem in Japan and other countries, uh, such as in Indonesia, United Kingdom, and as well as United uh, States of America. So uh, Sato Sensei performed uh, varieties of research and experiment uh, from the following topics, including the interspecific interaction among natural enemies, uh, such as uh, ladybird beetles, and then the effect of farming method on the abundance of organism the, uh, in the agricultural landscape as well as fraction of organism in agriculture. So when you're ready, uh, Sato Sensei, uh, the screen is yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the good introduction. And uh, thank you very much for everything today. And this is pretty good opportunity for me too. Uh, by the way, I have to confirm, you know, what is the situation of my talk? Ex expected <laughs> 25 or? Uh, 25 minutes. You okay, have 25 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 25 minutes. So can I start? Sure, 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 when you're ready. OK. So uh, everybody can see my PC screen now. Is this correct? Yes, it's okay, clear. OK, it's good. 
Well, after some concerning, well, I mean, uh, well, I think I have to explain that uh, the fact of the Japanese agriculture is now in recession very much, well, in some aspect. And that figure shows it. And this is pretty different from your Indonesian situation, I think, because now around everything is decreasing, decreasing, well, especially for this figure. Yeah, we have many, many rank abundant. And that speed of this increased very much in recent two or three years, especially while uh, we have the corona situation. So uh, for the scientists like me working in the field, this is pretty sad to see the land abundant very much. And uh, the people, many of them quit farming actually. So uh, everything decreased now and farmers income also, and they lose many monies. And this is a, I think this is very general situation of the farming in Japan in general. And I saw many farmers and many of them just complain the situation. And this is my topic today. But before I start talking about integrated pest management, I, I try to talk, you know, my myself a bit. Uh, I am not quite interested in that kind of things. You know, the situation, recession, Japanese agriculture, especially in local rural part of Japan. And the picture shows that. Is where my university locates in that cities. And as you see that in the surrounding area, we have lots of the rice paddy field. So this is a quite famous places for the rice pr uh, production in Japan. And uh, this is a local village, apart from the city center. And the color of the yellow is where the land already abandoned for many years. And this situation, I mean, this village is relatively okay, but other villages, especially up in the mountains, the situation is more serious, very, very serious. And the reason why is that everything go out from the village to the cities. And, and the diversity of everything is very small in a city, for example, they just depends on the rice productions, basically. And lots of abundant area land. And income is quite limited. So this is why they had lots of the deep populations. And yeah, this is a beverage. And that area is abundant, yeah. I'm sorry, because this is a weekend month. My son uh, is now disturbing me. Please, no. Because I have, I speak in Japanese, sorry, sorry about it. It's okay, thank you. I'm sorry about this. It's okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for understanding. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, in that village, my project nowadays is to recover the land. And for example, this land, well, this is very much located far from the village center. It's just there somewhere. Yeah, just there. And for 50 years, the land had been abandoned. And now we have the project to recover the land. And that was so tough, we believe me, 50 years and we have lots of the run like that all over japan and nobody cared that anymore we just forget about the presence of those runs 
Yeah, the curse that costs you to recover. I said, too tough to do it. And everything, like this one is a canal for that. That was a putty field. And that stacked with lots of the small particles of the everything, like, you know, piece of the wood, rocks, stones. And the student in our university tried to clean the canals. And now we can be able to recover the land. And not only just to recover the land, we think that we're gonna have pretty big circulation system for the energy between city and that kind of beverages. Yeah. Because that the beverage, they just lose everything bad. You know, we try to make circulation from the city to beverage also, based on uh, well, wow, this is quite common insect for the study nowadays, BSF, black soldier fly. Yeah? We also have it, and also the mat snails. And this is what I am very much interested in nowadays, you know, those two creatures. And not only those two creatures, but also we might have the very much complex method of Sorry, my son, again, please, please. Okay, uh, anyway, this is my study recently. The key word is diversity. Well, we must, that must be complex method, like, you know, integrated pest management is needed to do these kind of things. And now you see this question, all of you, please. What is this rent field? Uh, well, you may think this is just a cotton field, yeah? Cotton field. But in fact, uh, this is a kind of battle field. Well, because you see that, you know, farming is like a battle with uh, insect pests. So many farmers paid lots of the effort and they do the battle with the pests. And then I have another question, please. You know, what is a pest? Yeah. And this is just a definition of the pest insect in Japanese textbook. And I'm sure this is a similar with other countries' textbook. We just call it roughly everything which is not good for the human society, human life. Everything is a pest. Yeah. So is this a pest? Yeah, you please think about it. Is this a pest? Well, that depends on the situation. It's the answer, yeah? So it can be bad and it can be good, both. So pest is a quite relative concept from a human point of view. So what is a good insect then? Another question. Good insects? And this differs before and after 1970s. Yeah, that differs very much. Well, for instance, around that, oh, no, this is wrong. 19, 50 or 40 to 1970s. The pest management was like this one. This was very typical all over Japan, all over United States, Europe. And we call it shotgun approach. We just do it like that by using the chemicals, mainly. At that time, what was a good insect? What is a good insect at that time is? It's very easy, insect just die easy, quick. And this is a good insect at that time while we are using tons of the chemicals, excess of the chemicals in the field. The definition of good insect, the insect dies quick, easy. But that changes very much. 
Okay. Why well, anyway? By the way, that method, I mean, spraying chemicals by the plane to the field is still now, you know, we, we have that same method. Yeah? We do the same again. But the method is a bit more complex, complex, of course. By the way, uh, this is a pest management in Middle Ages in Japan. Yeah. What they do is, yeah, uh, it's like carnival, isn't it? They have the fires and they have the horns, they have the drums, and this is in the night. Because they believe that the insect is like something not good. So they just play those from their village and leaving there and going as a village. That's it. This is the only way uh, they can do it at that time. By the way, uh, do we still have that? Yeah, we still have it. But yes. not for the insects. Yeah, um, uh -huh. this is a carnival anywhere in Japan festival, sort of. We still have that traditions. So the aim of that differs now, but we still love to do it. And yeah, we still have that. Yeah. And after that, this is a hundred years ago, Japan local village, and everything done by manually. Yeah, this is a weeding. Well, they have to work from the morning to the evening every day without any holidays, of course. Yeah, everything was like that. Yeah, but 50 years later, we had the war. And you see then everything's damaged very much. Yeah, people were like that, very hunger. Lots of the starvation. The food is limited. This is in Tokyo. Yeah, just after the World War II. Look at his eyes, it's so serious, isn't it? And that is a part of reason why we just try to increase the food very quick. No patience. We just need to increase the food very quick. Although we Japan imported huge of the food from United States, but we also have to increase that. And the situation is similar to many countries like United Kingdom, Europe, America also. So uh, that was the reason probably we use chemicals very much because we need to do it. However, nowadays, of course, the situation differs. Yeah, so that's why people start to say that IPM integrated pest management, especially around after uh, 1970s when we had the loss of the pollution like that. Anyway, after IPM, the idea for the insect, good one differs very much. Before that, the insect, which is good one, worse, insect which dies quick, which disappear very quick, yeah, which we can kill them very easily is a good insect. However, nowadays, and that idea start from that ages, 1970s. Insect, good one, yes. Good insect, which is good for the human. Yeah? So we can use without abuse. Uh, this is a very important theory of the IPM, I think. Use without abuse. Uh, by the way, this is also what, you know, uh, the uh, former presenter, uh, doctors presented, explained that, you know, we, in, in IPM, we have three important method, yeah? But uh, what I am very much involved in my study is this biological control. And in fact, biological control is the most important in that tactics. So uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about the biological control. 
Okay, uh, we have many allies from this biological control point of view for the farmers. Well, I mean, this kind of thing is a quite general topic. So I think, uh, hope this is not too boring for most of you, you people. But you know, we have lots of the predators in the field like this one. And pathogen diseases is also explained by the uh, doctors in a previous presentation, yeah? And uh, my study topic mainly for that aphid and such predators. Well, most of that, you know it, from the lady birds to race wing or past stories. And they are all aphid predators. Yeah, right then. Okay, we can we can skip this one. But yeah, you may know it. Yeah, this is a wasp. Just after emerged from the aphid mummies. Yeah, like this inside this. Well, anyway, uh, like that. By the way, what is the most important things in a biological control? by using natural enemies is this one. Yeah, and a figure, and this is the aphid in fleas, has decreased by that presence, natural enemies, when this is present. Aphid in fleas decreased very much, but how about that when other predators were present? Yeah, aphid again increase. So this is why we scientists have to, we scientists have to study very much about the combinations. So the ecological study is needed. This is why. The reason why uh, aphid increase increase when several other predators present because the interaction is not always positive, but quite often negative. Yeah, yeah like this. So uh, this is also the interactions. <laughs> Wait, okay. Well, uh, this is adults and this is a larvae after aphid predator, we call it aphid predator guild. Among the species in this aphid predator guild, there is a predation. This is a part of the competition for the uh, food resources. They do have predate and pred predations each other. Uh, well, this is a kind of dilemma, isn't it? Dilemma, isn't it? Because um, this is, well, for example, lady birds uh, is the most effective predator of the aphid when aphid abundance is very high and they are very voracious and they can eat other things also. And those is an intra guild predation, we call it. And they have another relationship with other creatures like that. But anyway, the combinations of aphid, I mean the predators must be good one, then uh, the potential is okay. In the biological control, we have three tactics, basically. And those two, for example, well, importation. This is also explained by the, the former presenters. So I just uh, skip this one, I think. Yeah, we have that, it's quite famous. But this is very difficult in many cases. Uh, most of them uh, not working very good. And this one, number two, augmentation is also not quite common very much because that costs very much. So some cases uh, which succeeded is very rare but that is very good. 
but in many cases, uh, those two are not working very good in the biological control. So number three, this is the main tactics, I think. And that uses the, uh, the yeah, natural enemies, not imported, but uh, domestic species, yeah. Domestic species, yes. And to do it, uh, we have to minimize chemicals and blah, 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 you know, like that. Yeah, when you study organic, I mean, uh, biological control, many many people face to their, well, interesting, you know, organic farming is very nice because in organic farming, we don't use, we can minimize or we don't use any chemicals. So that uh, people think that would be pretty good for the spacious creatures and natural enemies. Yeah, But in fact, this works very much in many cases. Okay, uh, this is a result on my study. Uh, you can see that green birds. Oh, sorry, something wrong. Uh, not quite. Mm. They didn't work very much. I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I can explain that. Oh, something wrong, isn't it? I'm sorry about that. Well, in organic farming and uh, that creatures, this is a ground beetles, uh, one of the most common uh, natural enemies of everything. They eat many things, yeah? Uh, this increased very much, very much, that green bird shorts. And you see the number of the species. Well, it's difficult to see it now, but uh, species richness also increased very much in the organic farming, but not only species richness, uh that was very interesting that the variation not only species but also the size of the species increased very much in the organ farming and this is very interesting to think what is happening there but the time is limited so i skip this one okay well this is a quite general or common situation after aphid occurs in the field, yeah? So on the plants, we have variety of the aphid species, and also uh, that varies in density or abundance. And sometimes they drop to the ground by wind or any kind of the disturbance, so aphid also present on the ground. In that situation, how we can uh, control them efficiently by biological method. Yeah, we always need diversity after predators also. Uh, because this is very simple. When the predator sizes varies very much, meaning now you know, their target species varies also. So the when the prey, uh, I mean the pest varies in the sizes, then we need variation in the size of the predators. And uh, aphid, for example, large predators of the uh, ready birds, you know, uh, they are okay to the very high abundance of the prey. However, when the prey population, aphid population depressed, they just go away. Even in a situation, small species of the ladybird can stay. Not only small species of ladybird, also the parasitoid rasp and rat kind of things can work very well in low density of the aphid. After aphid drop to the ground because ladybird cannot go to the ground very much but the ground beetle can kill the aphid on the ground very efficiently so diverse natural enemy in the land is very efficiently work to control aphid population in the land okay this can be the last slide. So after listening my story, please, do you have any air? 
any idea, you know, what is your own story, please, on these pictures. And this is quite interesting picture I took in my house. Yeah. And uh, this is a predators. Yeah, this is a predators. And this is a pest. And that is the chemicals. Yeah. And uh, as you see, the antenna is not straight, meaning that they already died, both of them. And we have that chemicals. Okay, I think 25 minutes already, so uh, I have to quit. You still I have hope. four minutes left, actually. One minute. <laughs> okay. Four minutes. Four, four minutes. minutes. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> shall I explain this one, please? Yeah. Well, these chemicals killed everything. Although, well, this is my wife actually bought it, you know, to kill the pest. But that actually killed predators. Both of them were killed by that chemicals. So after, no, before we have that chemicals, what was happening was, you know, that predators controlled the pest. Also, there was some pest appeared to my wife, but the density was not very high, but because my wife disliked it, so my wife decided to have this one, and that killed both. After these chemicals lost the function, uh, I can imagine that that test entered the house again very quick. But the predator, they need more time to recover its population in the house. So this is why we, my wife, have to keep having these chemicals if she doesn't like to have that pest anymore. And this is actually what is happening in the agricultural field in many cases. Pest is much stronger than predators against chemicals. Well, this is because of the history of the development and uh, and its abundance also. Okay. Well, I think this is enough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. It's very interesting, uh, Sato Sensei. So we have uh, probably uh, questions that being uh, submitted uh, from uh, on the chat box. Oh. Actually, I'm more curious about the first uh, several slides that you presented before. Uh, what happened with the abandoned land uh, up to now? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And after what well, the land become abundant, nobody mm -hmm. cared. They just mm -hmm. forget about it. Oh, okay. In fact, uh, while, during our activity in the village, mm -hmm. the farmers ask us to use their land because many of them want to quit farming. Ah, oh, too bad. How, yeah, however, mm -hmm. the land is inherited by their ancestors. Mm -hmm. So this means that they have to protect their land. Mm -hmm. However, uh, as you see, well, maybe you don't know it, but the price of the rice decreases very much, oh, okay. especially after the corona, and that decreased very much because the consumption of the rice is very decreased. Mm. So uh, for the farming of the rice, uh, it's quite difficult mm -hmm. to have any, any benefit from rice production. Yeah, okay. this is a situation in Japan. So many people try to quit. However, they cannot do it easily because they want to protect the land inherited mm -hmm. by their farmers, our mm -hmm. ancestors. Mm -hmm. So there is a very big dilemma. But I'm sure that after uh, the relatively young farmers, which mm -hmm. is aging already 60 or 70 years old, oh. They quit farming, then you know, our land in many cases disappear very quick. 
Okay. Yeah. So that's why uh, <laughs> our government now need more AI technique or robot mm -hmm. to maintain the land. And uh, there is a lot of the fund for that kind of technique or studies nowadays. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, probably the same problem are facing with Indonesia as well. Uh, many um, young generation prefer to look for, uh, you know, uh, life in the cities instead of uh, yeah. walking in the farm. <laughs> Probably it's more interesting walking in the cities rather than on uh, walking on land. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have question here, uh, uh, Sato Sensei, yes. uh, regarding the use of uh, pest control whether the biological agent can be combined with the use of a uh, pesticide, either from the natural uh, substance or probably from a chemical synthesis and how it's uh, being implemented. Well, I mean, we have to choose the chemicals very much because mm -hmm. that in many cases it's not affect, I mean, it's not good for the predators. Definitely. Well, not only chemicals, but also the fertilizers, for example, is no good for the predators. Although in many cases, do, they do not kill them, predators. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. My son is very noisy. Ah, uh, it's okay. It's weekend, so <laughs> I'm sorry we are taking your time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even now, uh, well, maybe you know that you know even uh, weed killer herbicide. Yep, is is not good for the predators. Mm -hmm. So chemicals in general is not very good for the predators. However, uh, I know that we need to use the chemicals. Yes, we need so. Uh, we, what we can have effort is that we, we, we want to minimize the adverse effect of the chemicals to those uh, natural enemies. Uh, so this is very much we have to concern about it. Then you can use the chemicals, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Yep. Okay, so any more questions from all the participants, I think? Okay, we have one more. Uh, when we introduce a predator from other country, there is possibility for the introduced predator to suppress the local species. So is there any way to make the relationship between the introduced uh, species and the local species? So it's, it won't competing each other. Uh, Probably, yeah. I think we cannot stop that. You know, in ladybird, for example, uh, yes. from Japan, we have very famous ladybird species mm -hmm. uh, invading many countries. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Africa, United States, and Europe, and anywhere that species is called Harmonia This is a pretty powerful ready bird, which mm -hmm. attack you know, aphid very efficiently. Is invading to those countries all over the world. Yeah. Now the uh, population of the native species very much changed. Mm -hmm. But not only that species of the ready bird, we also have another species of the ready bird invading. But this is not only from Japan to us, but other mm -hmm. country to Japan yes. also. So I think we cannot stop. And this is a part of the history, isn't it? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, probably the, the problem uh, with the introduction of uh, other species from other location is uh, uh, the environment condition is going to be different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you can sit with your dad. <laughs> or, well, I have a young son as well, so <laughs> I sent him away to play. <laughs> okay. There's Thank one you. more question uh, regarding uh, the natural pest controls. Uh, what is the more effective for natural pest control, whether it's predator or parasitoid or biological uh, microorganism like fungi or bacteria? And okay. so, what, so what's cost for the farmer for uh, application? Yeah, this is very important. Yes. Uh, but that depends on the situation. Uh, yeah. For example, aphid, uh, when mm -hmm. the aphid initially occurs, the density is very limited. However, mm -hmm. soon after that increase like that dramatically, and uh, to deal with that big changes of the aphid density, for yeah. example, we need complex predators, mm -hmm. species, community, yes. definitely. For example, yeah. yeah. 
uh, like that, I already talked to uh, all of you, please, you know, Lady Bird. Harmonia Axidis is very good when aphid abundance is very high because their voracity is so big. However, uh, they cannot kill aphid perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yes. When aphid decrease in its abundance, mm -hmm. Harmonia or such, you know, voracious species, they go to another site for searching mm -hmm. more density after aphid. So they just yeah. disappear. Mm -hmm. Then aphid can increase again. However, when we have like parastoid or some other species, which is good mm -hmm. for the lower density of the pests, they still can work very good. So I think we need to have the complex community mm -hmm. of the predators in all yes. cases. And what is the easiest way of doing it is we have the balanced nature in yep. the agriculture landscape, then we just naturally have complexity of the organisms. It's what I'm thinking. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So probably the key is to increase the diverse of uh, the diversity of the organism in the agricultural uh, ecosystem. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so we have one more question regarding the ladybird. Uh, Ladybird or ladybird? <laughs> okay. How to conserve the ladybird beetle for long time on vegetable farm that using a uh, intensive uh, pesticide? Well, I mean, people say that surrounded environment is very important. Yeah. And uh, because um, agriculture land, the diversity is pretty poor in many cases. Mm -hmm. So after we have the aphid disappeared, then predator usually disappear also. However, if we have variety of the well, complex community of the plant surrounding mm -hmm. the area, then uh, relatively uh, some of the ladybird can stay longer. Okay. So always <laughs> diversity yes. and balance is a yep. key for mm -hmm. the sustainable things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, including that to grow a monoculture crop, isn't it? Mm, very much, so, yes. yes. Yes, yes. Okay. I think, uh, is there any question from the participant? We still have uh, some time left uh, for discussion with uh, Sato Sensei. Okay, uh, probably, oh, there's one more. Um, as we can, uh, as we know that the use of natural enemies to control uh, pest and uh, disease is a good way and doesn't give another negative impact for environment. But we we must spend long a lot of time to get the benefit of the of this controlling way. So other people sometimes choose chemical control because it's need all the uh, probably shorter time. So what what do you think about the uh, solution for the problem? Mm. Well, that's quite difficult. <laughs> but the, because in uh, to have a benefit from the uh, ecosystem, farmer need to wait. Yes, At be least, patient. Yes. Yeah, that takes more time. Yeah. So this is why people think that chemical is very good because that works very quick. Mm -hmm. So before we have the benefit from the ecosystem, we have to wait for the recovering and everything. So that would take at least three years or seven yes. years. Um, that depends on the situation. But this is amazing. Uh, for example, yeah, we, we have some farm uh, close to the university, uh, more than 30 years, uh, mm -hmm. the chemical is not being used, mm -hmm. 30 years. And that places, uh, even in this situation with a very bad situation for the rice production, they mm -hmm. said, okay, no mm -hmm. problem. And they mm -hmm. can sell the rice, very mm -hmm. high price. Yep. So, <laughs> Uh, just very difficult for the farmers, but I think you know they have to wait. Yes. A bit longer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but the problem is probably for Indonesian farmer. They cannot wait <laughs> very long <laughs> because they have a family to feed and everything else. Mm, yeah. Yes. Uh, so probably uh, to implement the IPM again, we have to um, embrace or aspect not only the farmer, but also uh, from the government level yeah, as well. Yeah, very much. Mm. Okay. <laughs>
Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sato Sensei, for the interesting talk. I think uh, we can, uh, since there's no more questions, we can uh, complete our discussion for today. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And probably uh, for the committee, please, uh, we will like to present our um, certification of appreciation uh, for you to give uh, your valuable time to share <laughs> your uh, knowledge and experience for us here in the international webinar. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so please give applause to Sato Sensei and the previous talk, Dr. Yubak. And we're coming uh, to our um, uh, third speaker, uh, Mr. Yoyo Yogas uh, Mana, I hope I didn't uh, mistake uh, mention your name. Uh, Mr. Yoyo Yogas Mana is graduated from the Bachelor of Art from Universitas uh, Pendidikan Indonesia. And uh, Mr. Yoyo is the spokesman for the uh, indigenous Sundanese traditional uh, community at uh, Cipta Gelar Village, uh, located at Sukabumi, West Java. I think Mr. Yoyo also already known uh, Sato Sensei, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you're ready, uh, your, uh, the screen is here, Mr. Yoyo. Let's go ahead. Okay. Okay, thank you. And please help me with the screening. <laughs> okay, probably hmm. the, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, uh, introduce myself, Yoyo Yogasmana from Kasupan Cipta Gelar. Um, I would like to, in, from the beginning, <clears throat> okay, talking about Kasupan Cipta Gelar, something like, uh, I would like to warn you. <laughs> all participants and also uh, this is about a, a story, not history. Okay, let's say not history, but this is a story from the highland, from the mountain. I would like to talk about uh, Kasapuhan uh, from the beginning. In the beginning, I mean, Cipta Galar it, uh, itself is, uh, we just have this uh, name since uh, 2001. Wow. And then, um, before that, uh, this Kasapuhan names is Cipta Rasa. Before that, also uh, Linggar Jati, uh, and then Sirna Rasa, and then Sirna Rasmi, and then, and then, and then we have the story of Kasapuhan, what we call now Cipta Gelar. We only allow to say the years of the Kasapuan Cipta Gelar only since 1368. So, on 2021, uh, today we have been uh, 653 years old to taking care, to continuing the tradition of the ancestor. We are Pancar Pangawinan. If you see a lot of uh, traditional people uh, in Indonesia. Uh, we have a different duty of life, how to take care, how to live with, especially how to take care of the nature. So, uh, is uh, has a duty as a pancer pangawinan, pancer spin, the center point, and Pangawinan or mengawinkan is uh, has to to combine between two sides of life and living. This is the concept of our our custom. And then we have to live in balance. We have to realize life. This the symbol of life is our body. You have uh, left and right. We live in the day and night. So, somewhere like that. This is uh, the message we keep from uh, generation to generation and to regenerate in the future for our generation. Uh, taking care of life has to be balanced. 
life. We get life because of uh, someone who's, uh, okay, let's say, because of food. The power of life is coming from the, uh, the food itself. Uh, so, so that's why uh, the ancestor said, <clears throat> we get life because uh, the power from the life itself coming from the uh, fatty pills, from the fatty, from the rice. Uh, and then farming rice is really sacred for us because, uh, yeah, and then we call rice itself uh, in our concept of life is uh, uh, Dewi Sri. Dewi Sri is uh, the basic concept of two balance of side, life and living, which is Dewi is coming from the words of Dwi, which is two, and then Sri means Seri, which is balance. Two side has to be balanced. We are alive because of rice, rice life because of us. So two side, two figure, it's really connected. And we are alive because of this. We have to take care of the rice like we have to take care of ourselves. Someone like that. Talking about the life in balance, this is on the, yeah, this is our tradition. And then uh, talking about uh, we as a human being has a calendar. If you follow the calendar of life from the sun and the moon, uh, and Fadi uh, itself has a, his own calendar, her own calendar, uh, which is the star cycle. Uh, so between us, as human beings following the sun and the moon and the fadi itself uh, following the stars. So we have a different calendar of life. And then because of rice pill, uh, I mean, we do farming rice as a tradition. We have to plant only once a year and then our rice not to sell and not for sale, because rice for life. And then increasing, following the cycle of the nature, uh, which is we follow the star cycle. And then we got, uh, what is that? We got bonus from nature, from the earth, something like that. Uh, for year, we got more than 40,000 tons uh, up to up to 40,000 years uh, apa itu bu <laughs> yeah it's bonus bonus every year we got more than 40,000 years uh, from uh, harvesting paddy and then we put on the uh, rice storages we call it we have more than uh, 11,000 uh, rice storages. So, Abba, the, the, our, our, our leader in this uh, uh, Kasepuhan said on 2017, our rice stock just enough for 95 years in the future. And this is because of what we, we follow the cycle of the nature. The cycle of the nature itself, what we call pranata mangsa, or in Java uh, language, we call pranoto mongso. And then because of pranata mangsa, because of we follow the cycle, and then we got a uh, blessing from the, the nature itself. Okay, the next uh, slide. <clears throat> the life concept, nyoreang alam katukang, nyawang uh, alam nubakal datang, talking about nature, and also nyoreang mangsa katukang, nyoreang mangsa nubakal datang. This is talking about time and timing. Uh, reviving uh, 
the past in order to see the glimpse uh, of the future. And also, this is talking about balancing of life. We have to see the past time, but the most important thing we have to take care of today because the time in the future will come for our generation, not only for us, someone like that. So uh, following the two side of living, it is really, really important for us because also we are in Kasapuhat has duty to taking care of this knowledge, to taking care of this nature, to taking care of the life and living, the creator itself. We have to take care of a uh, creator around the world. And then <clears throat> uh, not only for the rice farming, but also what we do in Kasapuhan, everything has to be balanced. Everything has to follow the cycle. Everything has to be, uh, to be, what is that? To be followed the concept of life. Somewhere like uh, we have Turun Nyambut. It is talking about uh, Mother Earth and Father in the sky, somewhere like that. Turun Nyambut is one of the procession, one of the rituals. We prepare everything because Father will come to the earth. Father will come to the mother. And when uh, the time coming, Father coming to the mother, and then the life will grow. It is what we call the meaning of the Turun Nyambut. And then at the end also uh, from following the cycle at uh, the stars and we have what we call the, the rituals of tutup nyambut, closing of the rice plantation because the time had to be prepared uh, for harvest in the future and taking care of the paddy itself the, in the rice field. And then the next, next slide, this is talking about astronomy. This is talking about uh, Tanggal Kerti, Turun Wesi. Tanggal Kidang, Turun Kujang, Surup Kidang, Turun Kukang. This is the, the main concept of rice plantation we have. Uh, talking about uh, astronomy, talking about uh, the stars constellation, we call Kerti. Kerti in Indonesia called Kartika. And also the Kartika, this is the Pleiades, Pleiades, uh, the Pleiades, or the seven sisters. And also what we call Kidang is Bentang Wuluku. It was uh, on the Jejerabic uh, book on 80, before 80, less than, yeah, before 80s. Uh, we still have uh, this information from this uh, education uh, from the geographical book uh, in the elementary school, but now no more. This is uh, important for us talking about uh, the constellation, the star cycle from Kerti, from Kidang. What is Kerti? What is Kidang? Kartika, the Pleiades. This is the seven sister. And also in our legend, Legend to legend, yeah. In our legend, talking about the seven sister or tujuh putri. And then the hunters, which is the kidang, this is the Orion. But uh, from this Orion, uh, we use the uh, Orion Nebula. Not Orion Bell, but this is in the Orion Nebula. This is the main point of. Uh, Kidang or the Orion itself, uh, what uh, people call this is the hunters. Talking about the hunters and Tujuh Putri, which is uh, the legend of uh, Tujuh Putri dan Jakataru. 
this is a really ancient history, exactly ancient story about the side of life on we and who give us life, uh, which is the body. The body should plan on following the star constellation and we never get failed. There is no fast, but we have insects around us. We have a creature around us, but there is no fast because these stars, following the star cycle, which is following this, the cycle of the nature, following the star cycle, we follow the cycle of the nature itself. There is no punishment from the nature if we follow the, uh, the cycle of the nature. And this is what we call the sign from the father, from the sky. And so that's why we never get failed, always increase more than 40,000 uh, ton per year. We plant only one a year because mother only could uh, give birth only once in a year. And in the rest time, this is uh, talking about years, 12 months. Okay, let's say that. On six months, we use from plantation to the harvest. And then other six months, we let the mother to taking care and to rest, to get rest. We don't allow to plant rice uh, after this, because uh, talking about the stars, which is some more like, uh, okay, like stars telling us about uh, the time for human being and also the time for the other creatures. We have rats around us. There are many insects around us, but there are no pests. They don't, there are no pets, pests. They are life. They are creatures around us. We should live with them. Do we are not allowed to kill them? We have to take care of them because also they are coming to uh, to be with uh, us as a human being. They ask to live with them, and we have to take care of them. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue, and then. <clears throat> This is uh, talking about uh, another, another, what is that? Talking about uh, the revolution in Indonesia was uh, Indonesia on before 80s or before 70s, I guess, uh, almost all around Indonesia, we plant rice once, once a year, but now uh, some of uh, people outside from Cipta Gelar, they plant once, two or three times a year. Uh, we only plant once a year, still following the, the ancestors said, still following the cycle of the nature, because talking about the nature uh, follow what we call mother, mother only, we respect only uh, allowed to let mother only giving birth uh, once a year. And then <clears throat> after Green Revolution on uh, 1980 something, 85 something, and then we see now uh, somewhere like, uh, what is that? Something changed. And then why we come why Kasapuhan is become now what we call Kasapuhan Cipta Gelar has duty to give another information at the other side of life. We have to be balanced of the life. And then uh, the Cipta Gelar itself has meaning to show up again, to see, to, to give 
the information about uh, at the other side of life and living. We plan like this in these uh, pictures. We plan uh, rice, what we call ngasek. We follow the kidang, uh, what uh, that's uh, the Orion Nebula signing uh, of the rice plantation in the right timing. But also always all, almost all, but always on the rice plantation, we follow this, the sign of the nature. When the timings come to taking care, how to taking care of the rice has to be manual and traditional. And also uh, in the, from the poor reparation on giving the, uh, the fertilizer and also on harvesting, on taking care, bringing the rice itself from the rice field to the house or to the home or to the, to the lake, to the rice storages. And also at the end, how to, uh, to make rice uh, from paddy become rice and also how to cook rice always had to be manual and traditional. We are not, not allowed to use uh, modern tools to taking care of the rice since beginning till the end. So this is uh, the tradition. Our, our tradition had to be like that. Uh, but also we use uh, what we call uh, like a modern uh, stove. And also this is, we, we only use this, not, not from rice or uh, rice only allowed to cook in the uh, traditional stove, what we call hawu. And this is, uh, uh, what is that, uh, the balance. This is the message. We have to take care of this uh, two side of balance between modern tools and traditional tools had to live with uh, togetherness. And then life concept. Uh, mohon dilanjutkan. <clears throat> In the life concept, from what we call uh, papat kalimo pancer or opat kalima pancer. Uh, oh, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Let's relate it to this uh, board. Uh, surup kidang turun kungkang. This is the sign. Surup kidang turun kungkang. Surup kidang means uh, when we cannot see anymore the the Orion from the uh, horizontal line from the eyes. I mean, uh, the kungkang or the insect or what we call walang sangit. Walang sangit. Bahasa Inggrisnya apa bu? Walang sangit. Saya lupa. Apa itu, Bu? <laughs> so, <laughs> Walang ya, Ibu, sangit. Mohon dibantu. Mohon dibantu. <laughs> Walang sangit itu apa ya? Ke kungkang. Ini ada bahasa. Surup Leptokorisa. Kidang. Leptokorisa. Nama latinnya Leptokorisa, Pak. Leptokorisa. Yes. Oke. Okay. Ada yang... Uh, oh, sorry. Oke. Okay. When the Aryan uh, disappear from the horizontal line, uh, and then the kungkang will come down. Uh, the Baris called here, the elder said, uh, there is no house in this earth. The, door, uh, the, the, the kungkang has no, uh, has no, has no, what is that? Has no place in this, uh, uh, in this earth, but they are, they are house from the sky. They are coming to give a sign for human being, which is talking or telling us the time for human being is finished. And then uh, there, uh, the, the, the creatures will use another time. Uh, this time, the continuous time. I mean, like in this years, six months from plantation to the harvest, and then the kungkang will come down and give us the sign because the time Uh, the, uh, the other creature will use this uh, the rest time. So we are not allowed to plan uh, in this uh, time because 
the other creature will use. Because we plant rice once a year, we never use pesticide to kill them. Ancestor telling us to give time, to give, um, to let them grow and breeding. So I'm not allowed to plant. Let them grow, let them breed. Because we are as human being back to the human being has to give them a chance to, to continue continuing their life. And uh, the, the star rotation or the star's uh, circulation, uh, following the star cycle, we follow the cycle of the nature. We will get the uh, punishment uh, when we follow the cycle of the nature. And then uh, the insect or the creature around us, like uh, rats and also uh, 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 grasshopper and what we call worm, the other insect who's always coming to the rice field, uh, they have chance to to regenerate their life. And in the basic of this, we have a, what we call the message from ancestor, Kudu Silih Asa, Silih Asi, Silih Asu, Silih Wangian. We have to taking care of them like we are taking care of ourselves, not only with the human being, but also with another creature. We have to be with them. We have to live with them. We respect each other and we have to, to, to live with togetherness in this world. And someone like that. I hope this is uh, not to not to hide. Uh, it is really simple, exactly. This is really sim simple. Okay, continue to the next. Uh, uh, this is the life concept. What I mean is talking about uh, we have papat kalimo pancer. We have opat kalima pancer uh, because this is coming from the uh, body reading, reading for ourselves, reading from the body. We have finger, four, five. This is papat, op opat. This is the, the fifth one. This is the concept of life. Papat kalima pancer, opat kalima pancer. This is the symbol of uh, how to read the nature itself by reading our body, because our body is the symbol of nature. So this is uh, like the ancestor itself giving us the, the life concept between mm, like a mother uh, uh, earth and sky and also like a, a heaven and hell. Uh, front, back, right, and left. This is papat. And also like uh, eyes, nose, mouth, and ear, papat. We have head, we have hand, we have body, we have uh, leg. This is papat. From, by reading our finger, this is the concept. This is vertical line, this is horizontal line. We live with this because this is the main thing for all those things. And also uh, we have to get all these things to be like this. And uh, this is uh, also, we see if you, if you realize uh, the concept, because of this concept, uh, why we, we Sundanese and Japanese always giving something uh, be, for the better, we'll always give the better one for others to give them, to let them, uh, to let somebody, uh, what is that? Ah, sorry, my English is not really good, but uh, yeah, this is what I mean. To give the good thing to others because this concept and also, uh, Tritangtu, Tritangtu, selaika here is buana pancaluhur, pancatengah, pancararang. 
uh, this is also the main spiritual thing concept from the 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 mm, the square the square from the four and also we still have another concept the three tangsu this is talking the spirituality of uh, uh, oh yeah 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 this is the symbol why the gunungan from the wayang golek wayang is uh, telling about this the history or the story of life and living and the gunungan itself the symbol if you see uh, the top of from the gunungan this is the symbol of the star and also this is what we call pohon hayat pohon hayat is life uh, life trees the trees always giving us the better thing not only uh, taking care from the from the sun uh, from the hot we also can get the fruits and also the water and also another creature we live we live with them on the trees and gunungan itself it is the symbol of uh, telling us to to the human being to realize the life is a duty to put another creature uh, around us to live with us togetherness with not killing each other uh, this is the, the symbol of gunungan then i guess we can continue on um, question or qr later on thank you hatur nuhun sampurasun Thank you, Mr. Yoyo. It's very, very interesting uh, talk. Uh, how you explain the traditional uh, ways of the Sunanese people to grow rice. So we have several questions here. Uh, the mm -hmm. first one is from Salmi Supriatin from Chimahi. Uh, she asks if there's any um, because the climate change. Is there any uh, probably uh, changes of status of the uh, insect, whether the previous one is not present and now it's become, probably become pest or something. And mm -hmm. how, how to control if there's pests? Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> talking about climate change, uh, mm. we, we have the understanding of the climate change is uh, the cycle. Mm -hmm. The cycle, if we realize starting from zero and then become one, number mm -hmm. one, number two, number three, number four, number five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, and will go to the zero. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, after a uh, hundred and then become a thousand and then become million, become billion. And then after that, we don't use anymore. To, mm -hmm. to, to, to account for the daily. So, uh, I think we have some. Uh, uh, okay. I can, I can hear your voice clearly, Payoyo. Hello, Payoyo, are you still there? I think we have a... Uh... Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> From Salmi, Sundanese. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, we, we I think we have problem uh, with the connection with Payoyo. Uh, his screen is kind of uh, freezing. Uh, we actually still have... Uh, lot question some more question uh, to payoyo is um okay ibu maaf maaf silakan pak ya about climate change which is mm -hmm. uh, in our understanding is uh, this is the cycle mm -hmm. because uh, the na nature itself has uh, the time when it is the cycle will start 
yeah. I mean, starting point of the cycle. And then and Okay, I think it's breakdown again. Uh, the connection problem, isn't it? Now, uh, okay. Maaf, ada telepon. Jadi saya pakai backup. Pakai okay. backup ini yang terbaik. Ya. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Uh, sebentar, sebentar ada satu, satu lagi. <coughs> okay. So, uh, climate change. Uh, mm -hmm. It's happening because uh, because uh, after a thousand years cycling mm -hmm. and then has to go to the finish line. It's like uh, uh, we'll get the, what is that? Apa itu? Bergesekan. Yeah. 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 Bergesekan antara satu mm -hmm. dengan lain yang lain. Mm -hmm. the, this is increasing the hot. Mm -hmm. Hot. Is, uh, and then so that's why ice melting. Mm -hmm. The earth is starting hot. But now yeah. people call uh, warming, global warming. Yep. Yeah. Global warming. And this is uh, the sign. The mm -hmm. sign. Uh, talking about natural itself. So, of course. Of course. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, talking about climate change from uh there are two sides, negative, uh, negative and positive, uh, and also from uh, the positive line, we'll get, we'll, we get increase, we get benefit from climate change. Mm. We get benefit from climate change. Uh, if before uh, early 90s, uh, this place is really cold, but now mm -hmm. it's uh, no more cold because of climate change. So uh, this is good for our life. This is good for our rice plantation. If before only we got uh, per bunch of rice only one and half kilogram, now we mm -hmm. get three kilogram to seven uh, okay. kilogram per bunch of rice because okay. of uh, the weather is getting hot. Mm -hmm. This is from a uh, positive line, positive yes. side. But of course, talking about other side, negative side, a lot of people talking about uh, uh, climate change. But we don't like to talk the, the negative things. Yes. We like we to talk, talk something. The good. positive yeah. side of everything, yeah, Pak, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone like that too. <laughs> okay, that's another question. It's actually an interesting one. Um, how do you teach the young generation about pranata mangsa or the astronomy behind uh, pranata mangsa to <clears throat> keep the tradition alive? So it's been <clears throat> 6,053 years, isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, not all people here uh, learning about pranata mangsa. We have, uh, talking about kasepuhan, kasepuhan lead by Abah. Abba has seven cabinet, what we call okay. Rorokan. Mm -hmm. One of these uh, cabinets called Rorokan Pamakayan. His responsibility uh, is on rice plantation. Mm -hmm. And people, people in Kasepuhan, enough only following what the Kasepuhan uh, do mm -hmm. on rice plantation. When the Kasapuhan starting to plan, and then the other will follow. Yeah. And uh, the dis deciding in the time when we have two plans, mm -hmm. uh, usually Kasapuhan, which is Abah, will invite uh, all the cabinet of Kasapuhan talking okay. about the time to plan, yep. the time to harvest, the time to mm -hmm. taking care of other mm -hmm. things uh, of the tradition. Mm -hmm. So people of course enough only following but yes uh, like myself i have to learn about uh, how the pranata mangsa is uh, uh, is rolling mm -hmm. the, uh, and also i have to learn how to uh, how how to find another words 
another sentence uh, about the cycle of the nature and the star cycle itself, mm-hmm. even the, the star's name, because mm-hmm. we only know Skirti and what is Skirti in the in national and the international words. Yes. Uh, so I found then uh, Kerti, which is what we call Kartika, mm-hmm. and then the Kartika itself, the Pleiades, mm-hmm. that's the seventh sister. Yes. And also like the Kidang, Kidang. that's uh, Bintang Wuluku, okay. and then Orion Bintang belt, Wuluku is the Orion, yeah. but uh, we don't use Orion belt, mm-hmm. but we use Orion Nebula. Okay. Uh, Orion okay. Nebula. So just like that book. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, and uh, only some people who studying uh, for the stars constellation, but yeah. the line of Pamakayaan, who's taking care mm-hmm. of the rice plantation, mm-hmm. their, their line, uh, their line, their regeneration also has to learn mm-hmm. how to work on star constellation. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so actually, there's always a science behind uh, the local wisdom, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have two more questions uh, regarding uh, the pranata mangsa. Uh, a question uh, about the uh, how do you arrange uh, the commodity uh, to plan the commodity? Uh, whether the calendar can arrange uh, what kind of uh, plants uh, that being mm-hmm. uh, planted on the land, something like that. Yeah. And whether it has uh, impact on the price in the market. Yeah. Like uh, Professor Kusunaka said, we have a uh, rice seed, originally uh, paddy seed, from mm-hmm. the ancestors 167 oh. varieties, yep. original. Mm-hmm. And then uh, every year after we plant, we will uh, we will separate a bounce or two bounds of rice mm-hmm. in the rice storage mm-hmm. to be uh to, to for the seeding yeah for seeding. So, for seeding and then uh always like that then uh always we put in the in this uh, in, uh separate with uh, other rice mm-hmm. because this is special for seeding somewhere like mm-hmm. that and we'll continue 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 mm-hmm. also we generate uh this knowledge to uh young generation mm-hmm. okay uh-huh. okay there's one more question uh, what is difference between pranata mangsa and biodynamic system? And how does this system deal with the world very high food demand? Mm-hmm. Biodynamic system. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind I, of didn't, I didn't that, really get it. <laughs> uh, I but, think uh, it's uh, probably it's almost the same because uh, in the biodynamic system, it's also involve uh, the reading uh, from the astrology and then okay. involve the local wisdom. I think, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think uh, it's almost the same between what you explained just now and uh-huh. the biodynamic system. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there any question mm. from the participants? We still have a few minutes. I think we have two minutes left uh, uh, for the discussion. If there's no uh, more questions, uh, probably I would like to uh, thank you for uh, all the speakers today uh, from Dr. Yulbak and then Sato Sensei and lastly, uh, Mr. Yoyo for giving us very interesting talk uh, today. And please uh, give a big applause for all the speaker. And uh, I think uh, this is the certificate of appreciation for uh, Mr. Yoyo Yogasmana for uh, giving us uh, experience uh, regarding the application of the uh, growing rice in Cipta Gelar Village. Thank you. Atur-hon. And uh, before I hand over to the uh, Master of Ceremony, I would like to conclude uh, from all the three speakers today that the basically, the term of insect, oh, sorry, the term of pest is the term that uh, being created by humans when the, uh, it causes like damaging to the uh, plants that grow by humans that the pest term come. 
And then uh, the IPM is a way of, or a one of tools that um, to put the balance back to the environment because the key of, uh, uh, the key uh, of the the key idea of the uh, agriculture for the sustainable agriculture is uh, uh, to increase the diversity of the um, uh, organism, uh, not only uh, insect but also other mm -hmm. microorganism as well as uh, plants. So uh, IPM is one way to uh, bring back the balance uh, of nature in agriculture. I think that's pretty much uh, for the session today. I'll hand over the venue to the Master of Ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Yoyo. Sami-sami, Ibu Hatur Luhut. Terima kasih. Sami-sami. I think there's no voice coming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've already listened to the discussion about how to protect the plant with three topics from our speakers today. And for all the participants, we would like to remind you to kindly fill the presence link form on the chat section of Zoom meetings room. We would like to thank to our moderator, Ms. Fitri, who has guided today's discussion, which is full of excellent information. Hopefully, what was discussed earlier can be useful for all of us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the International Webinar of Plant Protection Day 2021 has come to an end. On behalf of the committee, we would like to thank for your participation and enthusiasm. And also, we would like to thank to PT Cicil Solusi Mitra Technology, PT Telkomsel Indonesia Bayu, PT Biz Digital Indonesia as our sponsor, and also all media partner for today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, we will do our photo session. We request all participants to keep your camera on and prepare yourself. The photo session will be going for two sessions. All right, for the first session begins. To our participants, we hope all of you open the camera and give the best smile. The photo session begins in three, two, one. All right, the second session begins in three, two, one. The photo session has ended. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Samia Dini and Muhammad Hanif as your master of ceremony. We would like to say goodbye. Good afternoon, and we hope to see you next year at the International Webinar of Land Protection Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Yoyo. Terima kasih, Atur Nohon. Thank you, Sato Sensei, Dr. Yubak. <laughs> Panitia, penutupannya jam berapa ya? Halo Ibu.